All right. Excellent. Norman, I'll get you to start with your name and okay. how long you've been living in the city of Stirling. All right. Uh, my name is Norman Johnson. Um, I've been living in Stirling since about 1980. Um, I was originally born in South Africa and I emigrated here in 79. Uh, basically, I had a holiday in Europe at one stage and there were about 300 Australians on this bus trip I went on and we went skiing and I said, crikey, they are good people, I'm, I want to go live there. Because <laughs> South Africa, I didn't see a future and I think I was proved right there. So I came here and I've never regretted it for one minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was single when I first arrived. So I, I lived in Scarborough in a flat overlooking the Scarborough Beach Hotel. And I lived in uh, Scarborough for about another 10 years and then I met a, a very nice lady and we got married. And uh, we bought a block in Kareen, which is just north of Karen up there, and built a house from scratch. And that was the stage they were still selling off. And I said to her at the time, you can't go any further north than Beach Road. I want to stay in Stirling. I don't want to pay the rates that they're charging up in Joondalup. <laughs> and um, anyway, we raised the family there. Um, had a lovely time. We were two blocks from the Korean primary school and the high school. My kids all went to that school and everything. Got totally involved in community sport while I was there. My kids, I got them into surf lifesaving, all three of them. It's probably the best thing I ever did for them. It, oh, they were so fit, so healthy. They weren't watching television. They were out swimming, having fun. I became very involved in surf lifesaving. I still am to this day. Um, I must have started in about 2004, I think it was. So that was a good 18 years back. I officiate now. I've, I've never been able to swim. It's quite a joke at the surf club. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only member of the surf club who can't swim. <laughs> you can't save lives. <laughs> surf lives oh, no, but there's enough of them around. And <laughs> Once I, they get them out of the water. Yeah, you know, I officiate <laughs> in, in their carnivals and everything. Uh -huh. And uh, I've become referee and all that sort of thing. So uh, it just makes you a target, though. You get a coloured shirt and all the parents pick on you. But it's, it's, it's good fun. I really enjoy it. And I've met lots and lots of very interesting people. And, um, you know, my kids have all left Surf Life Saving now. They'll come back when, when they were a bit older. They're just doing their thing. And uh, I can remember when the Aussies came to Scarborough. I took a whole week off work each time and officiated at them and met all these fabulous people and all these seriously good surf lifesavers. And uh, yeah, they, you'd be standing there, you know, and you're in the under 17 arena and you think, yep, yeah, okay, well, 16 year olds, that's fine. And you're looking up at them. <laughs> My God, look at the size of you. <laughs> and they were from New South Wales. Yes, Queensland. yes, quite mainly Queensland, mm. you know, they, 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 and they were just. Well, a lot of them went on to become professional, you know, they're in the Kellogg's Nutri-Grain and all that sort of thing, you know. But they, I saw them when they were still teenagers and, they, you know, they were very good and they had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, my daughters played netball. I was involved in that. I can remember spending hours at netball courts down in uh, Subi there. And uh, my son played football for Kareen and I was manager of his football team and the whole bit. Anyway, um, after all that, my marriage fell apart, so I said, right, I need somewhere to live, and I chose this place, the drop of a hat. It was just so convenient. Um, in fact, the day I got here, I took one look. I said, right, to my son, would you like my car? Because I'm not going to need it any longer. And uh, he took it with all the bills. That was fine by me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I can catch a bus north-south from here, east-west, it's so easy, it's unbelievable. I, the shops are nearby, um, yeah, it's great. And uh, I ride my bike a lot, I keep fit. I've got terribly involved in the village, just one of those people. I run the social group now, Yeah. and uh, we have a very good social life, yeah. I organise quiz nights, movie nights, um, we go out for a monthly lunch, that's a nice job. I just have to find out which place we're going to go for lunch. <laughs> and then organise them all. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. How big is the social club here? Because there's quite a lot of villas. 
Yeah, well, it's all the people. It's, it's not an actual club per se. Mm -hmm. It's just a group of about 10 of us then organise things on behalf of all the um, people who live in the village. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I do have a good laugh because I've been made barman at the happy hour because I'm the only one who can get the champagne bottles open. <laughs> Oh, well, you're, yeah, you're the person to... Well, I've got an RSA and I did, did used to work behind the bar <laughs> drink, yeah. so I, I do kind of know how to, yeah. <laughs> how to get them open. Yeah. Uh, being so active and outdoorsy as well, uh, especially kind of taking the kids to use the beach quite a lot, yeah. did you see the coastline change over the years? Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah, and how? Oh, Scarborough was the biggest one. It used to be really quite run down and just a huge car park and everyone used to come down there at nights and, and do the drag racing and the, you know, all the rest of it. And then, I mean, I can remember when they built the Observation City and that was a big, big hoo-ha went on when that was happening. Mm. And um, I can remember there was this huge crane got put up and it made such a mess of the television, it wasn't funny, everybody's TV, we were getting double pictures on the telly because it was reflecting off the... The tower. Off the crane. Yeah. And um, I, I remember somebody tried to blow the crane up with dynamite and they managed to get three of the legs with the fourth one held. <laughs> and I woke up in this morning and there was police cars everywhere. I went, what? went on last night, you know, and they said, didn't you hear the bangs? And I said, no. <laughs> and then it was all in the newspapers and the news and everything. Yeah, somebody's TV, he'd obviously got the, the whoops because his TV was so bad. <laughs> he'd blown the crane up. <laughs> and um, then it was really good when they did the amphitheatre and then built up the whole beachfront. I think Scarborough is now just the premier beach spot in, in the country because even when we had the Surf Life Saving Championships here, all the Queenslanders and New South Wales who came, they said, oh, wow, this is something else, you know? And I think they've kind of tried to copy that in Broad Beach now. But, um, yeah, it's fabulous. Yeah. And, and I spend a lot of time down there, um, you know, because it's so kid-friendly. I take my grandkids there now. And there's such a lovely little playground and they're all riding around on their scooters and everything like that. Yeah. I think the only problem there is the parking, but that doesn't worry me because I don't have a car anymore. So <laughs> I go by bus and it's yeah. great. I'll take your bike. Oh, yeah, I do. I mean, I don't like hills too much. Yeah, it's <laughs> there's a few around, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I, I ride to all the surf lifesaving comps on my bike and that. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. And um, Observation City, that was... It was quite a posh place, wasn't it? Oh back gosh, in the yes. Day? When it I first opened, Michael Jackson stayed there. I oh think. yes, yes. All all the pop groups used to come and stay there, and there was a big honeymoon hotel as well. Mm -hmm. You know, weekends there were huge weddings, and because uh, Alan Bond owned it, and uh, yeah, so it was it was something else. It didn't bring the area up much. <laughs> no, no. It was still not not terribly good, and then there's only when they put this last plan in place that they really, really did a seriously good job of the, that beachfront and it's, mm. it's absolute um, beauty now. It's, mm. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, have you been back to South Africa? Yes. Yeah. And Not you, for one you still moment. feel like here's home now? Oh definitely? gosh, yes. I would mm. never go and live there. It's just yeah. too much violence and, and corruption and everything else. No, it's, it's not a nice place anymore. Mm -hmm. And have you had family and friends come and visit you here in Western oh, yes, Australia? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and they are terribly jealous of, of what we've got here. Because, in fact, I've, a lot of South Africans come to Perth because it is such a similar climate and lifestyle to what they used to back in South Africa. Yeah. There's a, quite a high proportion of them here. Yeah. And do, do you have a lot of South African friends? Not really. No. But I, I, I recognise their accent when I hear it. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, why this area? When I mean, you could have moved to anywhere in WA when you came over here, why this area, you think? Well, I, I liked the beach to, to begin with, and Scarborough was, was cheap. You know, it didn't cost much to live there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, that's why I chose Scarborough. But yeah, when I came back here, it was because of the convenience of, you know, the public transport in all directions and the shops nearby and, and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, no, that was the main reason. Yeah. And on top of that, I met a lovely lady while I'm here, so things are looking up again. <laughs> Because there's a lot more women in the village than there are men. Oh, well, there you we're, go. We're, we're outnumbered about <laughs> nine to one, I think. <laughs> That's good for you guys then. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to mention about the, the city of Stirling or any of the facilities that you've made use of over the years or changes you've um, seen? No, no. I, I've used the libraries a lot over the years because um, my kids were all bookworms. Well, at least I made them into bookworms because it was a big thing. Dad would take the kids off to the library every week and we'd change books. And I think it's just a fabulous resource that we have. Um, I still use it quite a lot, although I don't... Um, and libraries have changed, haven't they? Oh, they have, you know, because they've become much more uh, multimedia now. You can hire videos and DVDs and, and they help you with your computers and everything. And... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a terrific resource and uh, yeah, I'm just very interested in what they, they're doing with this whole area because it's going to become like the second hub, you know, for Perth sort of thing and uh, it's quite interesting to see it all growing up, you know, now while I'm here and, uh, you know, all the new freeway and, and, I, and also that's the other thing I can remember, you know, the freeway used to finish in Aussie Park when I first arrived <laughs> and that goes forever now. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That was north, wasn't it? That yeah. was, Osborne Park was like super north. Yeah. God, that does go forever. Yeah. Well, excellent. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Yeah.